Ezekiel's the DallasCowboys.com draft show. The Dallas Cowboys select Ezekiel Elliott. And now, your hosts, Dane Brugler, David Hellman, and Brian Broaddus. Well, it's day two of the coverage of the 2017 NFL Combine from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, Brian Broaddus, Dane Brugler, CBS Sports. Draft show regular David Hellman, DallasCowboys.com. Draft show regular as well. Kent Garrison, executive producer. We welcome everybody that's out there joining us today. And uh, guys, um, excited to get into a little bit of the personalities of these players. Mm. You know, we, we did see the opportunity to have some interviews at the podium. We got to see some guys lift. You know, so again, personalities work out. We haven't seen the full workout. That will take place uh, tomorrow. Uh, the guys that uh, that uh, ran through us today were the running backs and the offensive linemen. And uh, I want to get into, uh, you know, the, 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 we've talked about how this has become a, a media, really, a, event. The, this part of it. Yeah, talk become, about it, Brian. You yeah, wrote about it today. Yeah, I wrote about it on DallasCowboys.com, and I and – I, I feel kind of hate just, what you've become a little bit. I, I hate what I've become. <laughs> I really, I do, and I hate what I've become. And as Dave pointed out, it's my 25th year of doing this, of coming to the combine, and I, I've, uh, I felt like is the now the media side of the that uh, that I'm ashamed because I'm hurting my scouting side of it. But uh, if you want to read my opinion piece, please go to DallasCowboys.com and do that. I felt like I put it out there, I laid it out there pretty well. But the, the side that we got to do today, and, and, and real quick if I could, too, I'll go through the show. We'll visit a little bit about the sights and sounds, things that we heard today, guys that we got a chance to visit with, uh, do some stuff, too, with the physical side of it, the, the numbers from the, uh, from, bench the press. from the bench press over there. And I want to get into you about the bench press because I think you said something that you really weren't uh, – the bench press didn't mean that all that much for the offensive linemen. And I hope I'm not quoting you wrongly there. It's an overrated. Okay. Yeah, yeah we'll, I'll, we'll get, get, in, I'll get okay. into that. I want to get into that. But let me set this thing up. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about all that. We're going to do Twitter on the 20. And then we'll get into some other things. Maybe, uh, you know, we, we I got the impression that some of the guys might not really like football. Mm. You know, and just some of the conversations that were had. And as a scout, my ears perked up. Some of the guys or one guy in particular? Well, some of the guys. I think that we'll, we'll see. Okay. There's some guys I, I think that, and I want to get into that. And I want to get into that with both of you because I have my feeling about guys really loving football. And as an evaluator, where am I, especially at this combine, mm-hmm. if I get a guy that doesn't have that that fire look that fire in his eyes am i going to go away from that but we'll get into that in the second half of the show so you can get a hold of us like i say we don't have the ability to take any calls which is i'm sorry about that dave gets on me because i don't take calls anyway uh but when we get back to the star i promise to do that but way you can interact with us though is like we do twitter on the 20 send your questions you should be following at the draft show anyway uh kent garrison does a great job managing the account letting you know we're on Periscope, we're on the different platforms uh, that uh, you can. Uh, I had some people on iTunes today. Kent was uh, apologized about that. We got that all squared away. So thank you guys for everything you do to, uh, to follow along the draft show. But if you want to get your questions answered today, I want, to, I want to give you that opportunity. At the draft show, make sure we'll do that. David Hellman will Twitter on the 20, and we'll take care of that. Okay, impressions of the day. I know it's a broad question, and it's, one of those things where, you know, a kid stands up there for three minutes, stands up there for 12 minutes, for 17 minutes. But what do you gather in this, you know, a lot of these kids come from big schools. Mm-hmm. They're used to standing in front of the media and talking. And there's some kids that really aren't used to that, though. What did you take, though, from some of the big names that went today? Fournette, Cook, guys like that. Kamara. Kamara, Tennessee. Well, for, I mean, and we can get into that, but the main, the funny thing to me, you know, I, I already joked about how we make this big deal about the combine, and it kind of just like it takes forever for the ball to really start get rolling, you know. Mm-hmm. And then the ball started rolling today, and who did we watch? We watched the two positions that the Cowboys don't really need, like the the strengths of their team, running back and offensive lines, and and there were plenty of interesting things to take away. But I just thought it was funny. It's like 
Okay, and you know every other team in the league is like no swing oh. tackle out there for you. I'm sure, I, and I know draft nerd. Like, don't try to throw me <laughs> under the bus like that. But you I get, wasn't throwing you under the bus. I was just you saying. get my. Obviously, the Cowboys could use a tackle. I'm that, that's sure not they my could. point. But sure they could. If you had to say two strengths on this team, wouldn't those be near the top of the list? Oh, offensive line and, and, and running, running back. back. Yeah. yeah. Except and for so, backup you know, running back. Every team in the league is sitting here like, oh, Fournette, Cook, Kamara. Uh, Pumphrey and uh, oh, Pumphrey Hunt, interesting all, guy. Yeah, a lot of good, a lot of good players. But it, you know, for the Cowboys, I'm just like, all right, where, where are the pass rushers? Where are the corners? Oh, anyway, so, so you're you're lining up for your your focus is now going to be on these defensive. I'm trying ends to, I'm trying to make I'm trying to make this squad better in 2017. But to your point, uh, yeah, the, uh, and these were two really interesting interviews, and I thought um, Fournette and Cook were a really fun juxtaposition. Because I thought Fournette was a case example of like how these guys are coached to the extreme on their approach to the combine, mm-hmm. and how you know he just wanted to make it as boring as he possibly could, and he sure did. And, I mean, I went to LSU. I love Leonard Fournette, yeah. but that was as boring as I've ever been a part of. And then Dalvin Cook, you know, he wasn't the best interview ever, but he was much more engaging, much more interesting, much more willing to speak his mind. Uh, and I honestly. I came away from the whole thing with a better impression of Dalvin Cook than of Leonard Fournette. And, you know, I'm not going to let an interview dictate sure. your NFL career, but that's just kind of how I came away. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Well, the think? biggest thing for me during these interviews today was just finding out more about the injuries. Right. What's going on with the medicals. And Dalvin Cook, one of the biggest uh, wild cards this week based on the medicals. Right. And so he stood up there, and he said that he passed every single medical test. Uh, now, explain to him the test. Now, we, we've done research on this. Mm-hmm. It's the labrum. He's had trouble with both shoulders. Both shoulders. The, the back the front, shoulder, yes. the back, the front, on the right side. The, on the right side, back and front, front and then on the left side, right. the, I think of the front. Right. Is that what I said? Yeah. Uh, but it, dating back to his high school days, so three surgeries. Not good for a running back no. to have shoulder issues. Uh, for a 210-pound running back. Right. He's not, you know, that's not, he doesn't have the body armor ideal. He's not a Zeke. He's not a Fournette. Yeah. Uh, in terms of just build, uh, and, you know, physicality as a runner. Uh, but, I, you know, to hear him stand up there confidently say that teams passed him, teams cleared him. That's a big step for him. Now, obviously, when we talk to teams, that'll be a little bit, you know, make sure just to verify because, you know, you expect him to say that. But if hopefully teams come back with similar feedback that, hey, you know what, you check that okay, we feel a lot better about it. But what did he do today? Bench press. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's the other point. Yeah. That 20, was 22 reps. 22 reps. You're not doing 22 reps on the bench press if you have a sore shoulder. Or, or even yeah. a concern. Or about shoulder exactly. weakness yeah. Yeah. is another thing, too. Right. That 22 is more than several of the offensive linemen did today. Yeah. Uh, so 22 is a really good number. And kind of you touched on it, you know, the the bench press. And right. We can touch on it a little bit here, but it doesn't measure football strength. That's not the point of the bench press. The point of the yeah. bench press is to help with to show your endurance uh, you know, your your weight room strength, uh, you know, to show teams that, hey, I spend a lot of time, you know, working on my body, working out in in, uh, in that type of setting. So that speaks highly of Dalvin Cook and the fact that not only does he have, you know, the work ethic where he's, he's able to do 22 reps at 210 pounds, but also with the shoulders. It didn't affect him. So uh, a really good day for Dalvin Cook. Yeah, I, I think that if you're a team, and, and again, we – we're a Dallas Cowboys show. I mean, we we're, we're we're employed by the Dallas Cowboys. We like to keep the draft show as a is the best we can. You know, if you're happen to be a fan of another team and you're looking for a running back, that's why we're talking we're, about these running backs. We're here for the big picture. We are. You and, know, again, hey, we always talk about the you, fa- investigate and educate, and we do. We I, I you really, don't even have you don't even have to make a case for somebody who's not a Cowboys fan. Listening to this. You, well, I just I just like to you say should, you should care about these running backs if you you're a should, Cowboys fan because. You should. What happens One of them's going to end up somewhere well, where you don't want them to. Not only that, but what yeah. happens to them and where they go is going to shape the first round of the draft. Yeah. I mean, we right. talk about stuff like that all the time. We don't know, you know, is, is one of these guys a top five pick, top eight pick? Is is somebody going to fall? Is Leonard Fournette going to be there for somebody who didn't think so? And then yeah. that, in turn, affects what the Cowboys do at 28? I mean, it's all a domino effect. It's all linked together. Yeah. So to sit here and, yes, the Cowboys do not need a running back. Yes, neither one of these guys will play for the Cowboys. Right. But they might play against the Cowboys. Then not only that, but where they go could affect might who is available the to the down. Cowboys. Absolutely. Yeah. What are you thinking about? We You had a chance to debate Pete Prisco at your other job with CBS Sports. 
He was against the 240-pound mm-hmm. Leonard Fournette. And Fournette did say that he was surprised by that. Yeah. He thought he'd be more around 235, the water weight. Yeah, that, and that now I'm of, using this as an excuse. That's why I'm so big. It's the water weight. <laughs> How much water have you been drinking? Uh, maybe 260 pounds worth of water weight. <laughs> so it'll be interesting. Uh, I'm using it as an excuse now. We'll see what he is at his pro day. He said he feels most comfortable at 235. Um you know, I don't think it's a big deal, you know, for net if he's 230 to 240. As long as he's somewhere in there, I think he'll be just fine. I mean, people forget that Derrick Henry last year was 247. Right. Good yeah, point. I don't remember a lot being made about that. I mean, Fournette is a freak. He's oh, never, I made a big deal about it because I wasn't a huge Henry fan for the he, big back like that. Right, but you didn't think he was necessarily overweight. No, that's I didn't just, think he was overweight at right. all. That's just how he's built. That's how and he's same, built, same right. Same thing with Fournette. At right. 240 pounds does not make him overweight. I, I, if he run, if he is two thirty, does he run that much faster? I don't think so. That just, yeah, I think yeah. that's just who he is. He also said up there that you know if somebody asked him to play at two twenty five, he thought he could. Yeah. So I mean, that's what Ricky. Oh, Williams, he's comfortable playing at that two hundred and thirty pounds. Ricky yeah. Williams at the combine in nineteen ninety nine was two hundred and forty two pounds. Okay, he probably played more like two twenty five, two thirty throughout his career because he quickly found out that Gotta was be better slimmer, for the NFL. Yeah, right yeah. And at Texas get away with it yeah but in the nfl it worked better at a, at a lower weight yeah well i i you know the thing to me was I, I thought was interesting too with dalvin cook dalvin cook said he's the best running back in this draft he's not wrong i, I mean you get here and i feel like that's almost and, and we think this is a good group of running backs. that's damn near a consensus opinion honestly like i don't hear that many people standing on the table saying leonard fournette is a definitively better back no. It, there's not as much debate about it as I honestly thought there would be. Since I tell you, since the summer, I, Dalvin Cook, to me, has been the top back. And uh, I've always said I don't think he's uh, Zeke. I think he's a step behind Zeke. Mm-hmm. But to me, I will take him over Fournette. And I love Fournette. He's a freak. He belongs in the first round. Cook is just a better all-around back. And I, if, I feel good about the durability, the long-term you know, just ability to hold up. Then Cook should be the first running back drafted. It'll be interesting to see if NFL teams agree with that, or might they go with you know when Fournette goes out there and runs a four four eight, you know, at two hundred forty pounds. If maybe all right, well, he's just too much of a freak. We can't pass on him. You know, he said, that, he said he's thinking four fours. See, that's the funny thing about it because I asked you this question yesterday mm-hmm. about would if Dalvin Cook is your number one back, mm-hmm. would a four four eight from Leonard Fournette change your opinion about him as far as where you would have him? No, because I know he's fast. Now, I mean, even if he ran in the four threes, it's not going to change my opinion. Right, because the tape. Well, and for a running back, how much does a 40-yard dash really matter? Well, we, I mean, we've you, seen with I mean with Zeke, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a 4-4-6 four, four, maybe, is that four, but I'm talking about the finish. Four, that's four plays a year. Where, like, you know, right. where you're exactly. straight in, like, you know, burn away speed. And, you know, you could argue it makes a difference between Zeke and DeMarco Murray, but I agree. I mean, tenths of a second on a 40 should not dictate your pecking order. I mean, you should decide that on something more concrete, in my opinion. We talk I'm about, just asking. When we talk about 40 yard dash, I think corner and wide receiver, it, it matters a lot more. You yeah. know, the vertical, and you want to see that. But when it, Talking about running back, I, I care about, about the three cone, the short shuttle, the change of direction. The oh, explosion. now you're speaking my language. I want to see what Fournette does in those drills. Now, if he performs exceptionally well or exceptionally better than Cook, then I'm gonna not going to change my rankings, but I'm going to go back to the tape and say, okay, he's a lot better than Cook was or you know, just on the quantitative data. Let's go back to the tape and figure out, okay, did we miss something? Yeah. What's going on here? I think, I think to me when you talk about corners – when you talk about receivers, right. even linebackers, running backs, mm-hmm. give me the 20-yard shuttle. I was, yeah. I, when, I, when I used to do this, when I used to sit in that RCA dome, I would go, everybody else would go watch other drills. I'd sit down there and watch the 20 shuttle. That's the one, that's the drill where they start in the middle, you go, to, you go 10 one way with one hand, go 10 the other, right. and then come back and finish. Right. Look at those times. Those are the ones. You get some guys that get in that under four See, that's three, on that. Three cone. That's that's the same thing for me. Yeah. That's how I feel about that. If you get under seven right. in the three cone. You're, you're doing some work. Yeah. Because you can't. If you're stiff, even a little bit, you, you can't, can't hide. You can't hide that. You're, it's going to be exposed. And so the short shuttle and the three cone, both, they show that not only initial burst, change of direction, uh, that flexibility, and, and then the finish. The, how Can you close? So I think, yeah, if you're a little bit stiff, you're not going to be able to hide. You're going to get exposed in those drills. 
Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, that's what I say. I used to sit down there and watch guys go one after another, and you, you could tell, you could tell a lot about. Well, okay, wait a minute. This guy on tape, you could tell why he's stiff, right? Because you watch that, that you watch that drill. Of these running backs, of these running backs that work out tomorrow, who is going to work out the best? Who do you feel like, and who do you feel like is going to be the guy? That when it's all said and done, we're going to go, okay, that, that, that kid right there helped him the most. I think it'll be Cook. Um, I, of, the, of the top, of those top guys. I, I think of the, Cook will work out the best. Of the Cook and then the Fournette, McCaffrey, say, McCaffrey. We're, not, Gallman, we're not talking about McCaffrey. Kamara, you know, Samuel. I mean, I, I mean I've got him. He might not be. He's yeah, a receiver. He's, be he's a receiver. receiver. Hunt. I mean, who, who of that group do you think will have the best workout? I think I think it'll be Cook. I think McCaffrey will be up there. Like he came in at only 202 pounds, only put up 10 on the – and it was a wobbly 10. Yeah, it was a wobbly 10. On the bench. Um, he just – that's his body type. You know, he's probably maxed out. So, you know, it's – talk about him as a feature back. You know, can he hold up? Is he a three-down player? Uh, he kind of said today he feels disrespected. You know, he feels like he is that type of player. Uh, and so the player that I think I'm most intrigued about – in terms of his workouts, is Deontay Foreman from Texas. Mm. A guy that got a lot of folks interested in that one. Dominated the Big Twelve. Sure he know, did. And it's a and you hate the defense in the Big Twelve. What defense? Exactly. Uh, huh. And at two hundred and thirty three pounds, I want to see how he works out. Not not the forty, but I want to see the change of direction, the short shuttle, the three cone. Because you don't see drills. that on film, do you? No, because it, it, yeah, you see a lot of power. You see a lot. You don't see, see power. A, you don't see shifty moves. You, know, you don't see miss the make the first guy miss moves. right. Because honestly, a lot of times you didn't have to. Right. You know, because that's again Big Twelve defense. So uh, I want to see how he performs. I, he talking to him earlier. He he thinks he's he, he feels pretty good about how he's going to test. And so I'm eager to see if he lives up to that. Everybody in mind, McCaffrey. I, I mean, I, and McCaffrey's kind of the forgotten man. I mean, and he yeah, does he have does he have a right to be that he feel that feels slighted by everybody? Probably, considering how damn good and versatile he was in college. Oh I yeah. Mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again and say like I don't is he like an every down back in the NFL? I don't know about that, but I totally get where he's coming from in the sense that he feels like I mean I, he should feel like he is. All these guys should be confident in what they can do. Me personally. And this is biased, but I've I've known who Leonard Fournette was since I was like sixteen. I mean, right. he's the stuff of like folklore in right. in Louisiana. Oh, watch the highlights at night. Uh well, not and I don't not even just college. Watch, the, watch safeties just crumple. The stuff coming out about him when he was a high schooler, like bossing seniors around as a freshman in high school. I mean, Leonard Fournette was a household name in Louisiana before right. he ever put on an LSU helmet. Right. Um. And this is this is suited for him. And if, if he doesn't really, really ball out in the workouts, I will not only be surprised but disappointed because it's all been – this is what he was – I actually asked him about that today. I was like, people have, been ta- people have been talking about you entering the draft process since before you even got to college. Right. Does it feel weird that you're actually here, like you're actually doing it now? Right. And I don't know. The, the, there's just been too much hype about this guy for him to not come out and show out. Yeah. So. I'm I, I'm looking for him to really blow people away. Tomorrow. I'm looking forward to seeing Cook work out tomorrow. I'm looking forward to seeing Gallman work out from Clemson mm-hmm. is another one that I think that I'm and Kamara from Tennessee and then Hunt Toledo. Toledo. Yeah, I, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking for those guys tomorrow myself because I've got them at certain points on my board and I want to know though is the is the workout matching the tape and then you know. When does, you, it, does it fit? When you can, and McCaffrey falls into this too for sure. But when you consider what the Cowboys could use and what each of these guys do, and where the Cowboys pick, Kamara is a guy that really intrigues me. Just in the sense that, like, I don't have to scratch him off the board right away like right. I do with Fournette. And also, he could be a complimentary back to Ezekiel Elliott. I mean, do you think that, Cowboy fans would scream? Yes, if they drafted they. McCaffrey. Yes. Well, yeah, because you had to draft him in the first round. And so, right. No, if you yeah. took him at twenty-eight, and I think you would, you have to take Kamara at twenty-eight. You think? Could you? No, no, no. Him? I thought you took him. No, 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 no. Well, either, but I think you do. Yeah. Yeah, I think. You I do don't too. think. He, I mean, Kamara from Tennessee. You yes. think you're gonna have to? He doesn't get to sixty. I don't. I think he goes somewhere in the top fifty picks. Yeah. Or maybe fifty-five. I don't. I, I think they both do. Right. Kamara and McCaffrey. Oh yeah. yeah. I agree. 
And so you're taking a running back in back-to-back years, especially after your running back did what he did last year. Yeah, uh, it's not you're that's, not, that's, not allocating your resources well. I don't. That's a tough sell. A yeah. very a very tough no. sell. But McCaffrey, because you don't see him as an every down play. I mean, as an every down back, you see him as a utility player. Sure. And he would be like Lance Dunbar on steroids. Like he would be. And able they, to, and they didn't do anything with Lance. You Dunbar. heard it here first. Steroids. Yeah. Ooh, and that sounds bad. Yeah. It would be Lance Dunbar at a much higher. He would be able to catch run and do all your I would returns. be interested to see if fans out there would have a problem drafting McCaffrey at 28. They I don't need to ask them to know that they would flip. Yeah. You think they'd flip? I mean, you could find people who would be yeah. on board. Where's he on your Where's well, in your top 50? Oh, he's high. It, he's a first round player. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's somewhere in the 20s for me yeah. uh, on my board. Uh-huh. He's he's a first round player. He belongs right. in the first round. I think he's a feature back. You just kind of tweak your opinion of what a feature back is. Oh, okay. You know, because he's every down player. Well, you don't want him carrying the ball twenty five times no. a game, but you want him touching the ball twenty five yeah. times. So you know, seventeen, you. eighteen carries, put him in the slot. Should I do? And that's something that I'm not sure fits the Cowboys because they have their. Should slot I do receiver. a poll about this? Absolutely, All do right. a poll. Okay, Dave's going to put up a Twitter poll, and let's see if uh, we can get that. Hopefully, everybody out there will do that. Okay, we're going to take our first break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to hit that Twitter on the twenty. Stay tuned. You're watching the draft show. With unlimited data from AT&T, you can stream your favorite DirecTV content almost anywhere. Side effects may include sports-induced public celebration, yes! increased desire to share spoilers, and repeated late-night use of the phrase. Just one more episode. The unlimited effect. Get unlimited data when you switch to AT&T Wireless and have Direct TV. After 22 gigabytes of data usage, AT&T may slow speeds. Must have eligible TV service. If you're not eligible, AT&T will move you to a new plan and overage charges may apply. Plan will include stream saver. Other restrictions apply. See store for plan details. Hey, Cowboys fans. Did you know that over the next few years, more than a million service members will transition from military to civilian life? Veterans face unique challenges when they get out of the military, and Bank of America and the Dallas Cowboys are teaming up to help with financial education, career opportunities, and support of military nonprofits and organizations locally in North Texas and across the country. We're proud to support our troops and are deeply grateful for the dedication and sacrifice of our service members and veterans. Bank of America, official bank of the Dallas Cowboys, invites you to join us in our efforts to get involved by tagging game day photos on social media using hashtag troop thanks. That's hashtag troop thanks. And by learning more about our commitment to veterans at bankofamerica.com slash military support. Together, we can thank our troops in ways that make a real difference. Copyright 2016, Bank of America Corporation. I went to my first Cowboy football game at the Cotton Bowl when I was 10 years old. I've been a Cowboy fan ever since in the Super Bowl years and the not-so-good ones. Teamwork is what makes winners. At the law office of Domingo Garcia, we play as a team to win your case. If you have been hurt in a car or truck accident, injured on the job, call the law office of Domingo Garcia and join our winning team. With offices in Dallas, Houston, Austin, Odessa, and Tyler, we can help you in Texas. Call 214-941-8300. 214-941-8300. This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. The Cowboys are on the clock. Back here on the Draft Show from the uh, Convention Center here in Indianapolis. Dane Sounds Br- way less official saying Convention Center as opposed to Lucas Oil yeah, Stadium. Yeah, we're not there anymore. We're in this uh, big convention center. Right and, across uh, the street. Right across the street. So uh, we're here, uh, man in the station. I want to thank uh, Caliber Collision and uh, Tommy John for uh, helping us out, being the sponsors. Dave, you're a big fan of that uh, Tommy John I am. product. I'm really we sad. We talked about the socks yesterday. I'm really sad I left my Tommy John underwear in Dallas because it is the, it's the nicest underwear I own. It doesn't ride up. It's just very comfortable. It's very uh, – you do a lot of walking here at the Combine. No chafing. No the, chafing whatsoever. Absolutely. It's, the socks uh, are the socks are glorious too, right? I can't, I, they're, I can't stress enough what a dynamite product this is. And I hate – I hate shilling for. Th- I won't shill for something I don't believe in. But yeah. This is. But you believe in this. This is a quality product. Yeah. Well, we, premium underwear is a is a real thing. It I didn't really believe is. In it mm. until Tommy John came along. hundred percent. It's worth worth every penny. Well then. Tommyjohn.com slash cowboys for cowboys. Yeah. Tommy get, John. Get you some Tommy John yeah. underwear with stars yeah, on. Yeah. Absolutely. That's Caliber Collision and then Tommy John. Thank you both uh, for being along. Okay, we're gonna get into uh, a little Twitter. On the twenty. Twitter on the twenty. There you go, Dave Helmut. Take it away. We talked about this sort of yesterday. We remember Speedy Noyle talking about maybe he should play corner. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, 
uh, maybe that, but uh, and Jabril Peppers comes into this a little bit too. Hmm. Friend of the show, Bobby Belt, wants to know. Bobby Belt, good man. Bobby Belt. Who's in Who's in the biggest need of a position change when they get from college to the pro level? I mean, this could be tackles to guards. Hmm. This could be safeties to corners and vice versa. Yeah, I, th- I think Speedy Noyle belongs in that conversation. And guy we talked about, a phenomenal athlete. He just his routes are terrible and he drops too many passes. Yep, there you go. Um, but you know, we talked about him yesterday, so we'll, we'll move on to someone else. You know, I think Jabril Peppers. It's not necessarily needs a position change. It's just what position do you play him? You know, it's just I think that's the more confusion there. Right. For me, I'll say Forrest Lamp. Uh, you know, the four year starter at left tackle. He's in that Zach Martin mold where right. could he potentially play outside of tackle? Sure. I think it's possible, uh, just like Zach Martin probably could. But to maximize his talent, the skill set, best put him inside a guard. I think Forrest Lamp has you know, Pro Bowls in his future. I like the way he spoke today yeah. up there at the podium. You no, know, he was, I missed he was, him. What he, did he, he was, say? No, he was very, you know, as the questions were firing to him, he was very thoughtful about your question, your question, your question. I, I thought, you know, to me that showed a little bit of organization. A little bit of focus on, I want to, I'm answering your question. Thank you for that question. I'm answering your question. Thank you for that. I mean, he was that type of guy. I got him ready. I, I talked to him on the phone a couple of weeks ago, and <laughs> he know. he was no, he was very prepared. He the mm-hmm. questions were coming at him. He thanked people for being, you know, for getting him to where he is today, and I, and it, it meant a lot to him for to be here in this opportunity. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out a guy, Desmond King. Uh, yeah, from Iowa, one. y'all have talked about it. Yeah, him. and and I and I the draft show. I, I want to bring up guys. I want to bring up more guys. I, you know, Desmond King. We talked about Iowa. I think the Sutton kid too from Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And I've been pushing this one though about him. And uh, you know, he's a corner at, 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 at Tennessee. I saw him at the at the Senior Bowl play safety and cover OJ Howard in some drills, in some seven on seven stuff. And he looked really comfortable doing it. And his speed wasn't attacked right i think as a corner he gets attacked but as a safety he might have that ability to be able to play back and be able to play down wherever he has to do have the cover ability i don't know how great of a tackler he could be now i know desmond king could be a great tackler well let me go back to king for a second here uh, what number are you expecting from him in the 40 you know we talked about the yeah, 40 being four five for three was kind of the spring number right. that people were dealing with because that's not a ter- I mean, it's not terrible, but you could corner. see it on tape, Dave. Right. You could see him on tape, not you could see separation. And I, I physically love how the kid plays. I love how he tackles. I love how he's willing to stick his head in there. I love how he comes forward. And I think he could do that as a safety, though. I just worry about that 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 burst in that separation and once that he's people, beat, he doesn't have the makeup. He can't he doesn't to, have the catch up yeah. speed. He does not have that catch up. The speed. more and more we go through this, I kind of I'm mean, I'm not trying to get too off topic, but I think about how hard it might be to retain Barry Church and how JJ Wilcox is maybe not too big of an improvement on what you already have in Jeff Heath and then Byron Jones is there. The deeper we get into this, the more I really like the idea of spending a big time asset on a safety. Mm. I, in terms of what your options are. Would you are. rather spend a big-time asset on a safety or a tight end? A safety? Yeah, a safety. Because depends. Looking at the Cowboys. It depends. You yeah. know, cause I think, I it, mean. If you're telling me you could have either O.J. Howard or, I mean. Desmond who, King at 60? I'm trying to think. Because, I mean, that's Hooker, tough, though, Hooker that's, and Adams are off the board. They're sure. gone. At, at 20, 28. Buda Baker? Yeah, see, like, I, to me, I'd rather have Howard. Yeah, you know, I, mean, I think Howard's a more slam dunk prospect than basically any safety you're going to have a shot at. Right, and so that makes it difficult. But I think this team could use a really good safety over the next two years more than they could yeah, use a tight end. Yeah, the overall I mean, point, you're absolutely right. Um, but I think at what point in the draft, you know, Des King, I think in the second round, I'd, yeah, I'd like that. I wouldn't have a problem. If Des King's sitting there at sixty. Watch me go up on the table at the star. <laughs> Both big feet will be right up on that table. I, I think this guy's got the ability. He can. I. I just like his demeanor. He's a tough sob in the way he plays. Okay. I. This wasn't going to be my next question, but this is a good segue. I'm so sorry. I don't have your tweet up. I don't know your name, but somebody asked earlier. I thought it was a good question because we've talked about him before, and I agree with the question. I have heard Obi Melifonwu, the Connecticut safety. Good job. Thank you. Appreciate Melifonwu. that. I have heard him talked about everywhere from the first round to the third day. I've heard it all. So 
Where what what is this guy? What is your range for this guy? I know we've talked about him as a player. I know how y'all. I mean, he, you know, he's not as stiff as you would expect from a six four, two hundred twenty nope. pound safety. He's not. He's got some coverage to him. He does. Blah blah blah. But what where where are you thinking this guy is actually picked? I think there is a chance he could be that riser this year. He skyrockets into the first round. There you, uh, go. you had body beautiful. I think he's going to test really well. At that size, and uh, who's our guy? Atlanta took last year. Keanu, Keanu Neal, Neal, right? And it was the same thing. That one to me that came out of, a lot. Of that people. came out of nowhere. And he played well as a rookie. And for he the sure Falcons, did. So he sure, and he was a big body guy, he right? Was, right. And so I think Melifonu. I don't see. I don't see a first round player. I don't see a second round player when you watch him on tape. See, this is this is what we're talking about. So here. yeah, third. <sighs> I don't, you got I, a three four or I four? I, I think I have a three four on him. Yeah, uh, I, I, I went I went straight three. Like a borderline top one hundred, but he's not going to go near that spot. I think yeah. second round's probably his his floor in terms of where he's drafted. It's, it, based on what he does here, I think he's going to test really well, and I, first round's possible. The old man is going to give you a history lesson. You want to say oh something smarmy right here? No, I I, the old man's going to give you a history lesson. Joey Browner, Steve Atwater, big safeties mm. that made it. Big safeties that didn't make it. Look up Patrick Bates mm. and look up Patrick Watkins for the Cowboys in the fifth round. That was one That was one of our special days. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a stiff guy that couldn't move, couldn't turn. Florida State guy. Two names. Joey Browner. Go back and Google that if you're too young. And Steve Atwater. Big safeties. I hope you don't need to Google Steve Atwater. No. But Patrick Bates was a, a very high pick by the, uh, by the uh, Los Angeles Raiders. From UCLA went by text by way of Texas A and M, and so uh, you know that, those are names of guys. They've had some big ones that have failed. You mean an A and M defender didn't pan out? Wow. Didn't pan out. <laughs> they don't even they don't play defense at A and M. Kent so with the self burn. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Fitting self inflicted coming wounds. from an Aggie, and this is a draft where the number one player I was going to say is from A&M, not a so. great thing to say when Miles Garrett's the number <laughs> exactly. one pick. What do you got, Dave? Uh, Dat dude Paul, love that Twitter handle. Dat dude Paul. We talk a lot about how corner and defensive end figure to be there. A lot of lot of players here. Good question here. Who? Where does it drop off after the first round? Like in in layman's terms, where are they effed? <laughs> you know, like if <laughs> no, you, that's fair. If you don't get your guy at twenty eight, where is it? Like you're kind of screwed. Oh geez, I'm looking at I'm looking at on my board. I'm looking at guard. Would that be kind of where it's at? I mean, I've got three centers. I got a second center, a third center, uh, Eflin, and then Posick and Olaski are my three guys in right. centers. I mean, I could it be a quarterback? Now you're saying if you don't get the guy at twenty-eight, if you don't get the guy at twenty, which one? Which is position? He about Cal- he's just talking about position in general. Which position has the steepest drop off as the draft goes? Okay, I mean, you got to get your guy earlier. You're not. Gonna I think get it's him. tackle personally. Tackle, yeah. I mean, the quality of the tackle. Their names there. To me, Ram checks a top twenty pick, and then I think there's a little Robinson. bit of drop off, and then you got Cam Robinson and Garrett Bowles, right? And then you have another pretty sizable drop off. Uh, and then you got your Taylor Motens, your Antonio Garcias, uh, and but th- those two guys to me aren't you know clear cut starters. They, People are talking about Sharp from Florida. I yeah, mean down, down the line, line. right? So yeah. uh, you know I think there's I think tackle to me if you want your guy if you want to tackle uh, a starting caliber tackle especially right away I think you have to get him early. What like, I just went at you with that I went with the Lamp Dawkins Feeney combination. Yeah. Okay, all those guards go off the board. All of them go off the board. Yeah, they all go off the board in the second round. Now pick me one in the third, fourth, fifth round. See, I've I've got Ethan Postick in the third. I know, to me, he's not a center. I I like him as either guard, maybe even kick outside the tackle. Gigantic center. Uh, Right. I don't. He doesn't like six. He doesn't like tall centers. I didn't like Glasgow last year because of that. Well, I grade him as a guard, a solid guard. Uh, but I also have Nico. Where do you have Postick then? He was talking about Postick LSU. Third round guard. Okay, so then that makes it, because I've got him as a center, but that makes it a little bit bearable. Because mm. yeah, I see a gap after the second round, then you go down into the fourth round. See, I've, I've got plenty of guys in the third and fourth round that guard. 
you know, I, I probably like some guys better. Nico Siragusa from San Diego State. See, I need to do that. The guy one. I need to look at. Uh, Asiata from Utah, same type of did thing. Did a nice job on the bench today. He did. Um, USC guard, Damian Mama. Have you looked at him? Yep. I, I think he's kind of in that okay, mix so as well. Okay, you've got names. you've got names to fill in that spot. So right. it's not as Pronou- – It's pronounced Mama? So we had Daddy right. Nicholas last year, and now we got <laughs> Mama? Good. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks for paying attention to the draft. Of course. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's Randall who asked me about OB Melifon when we were Thank later, you, so sir. Thank appreciate, you, appreciate that. Appreciate yeah. that. Um, question from Justin, given that this is going to happen soon. Um, and we've talked about this before, but whatever. Which drill at the Combine translates the most to success for a defensive lineman? Which one? And pass they're, rusher they're, they're or look, interior? I mean, I, I, he said D lineman. Let's say pass rusher for the purposes of the Cowboys. Uh, there's two drills I pay close attention to and that's the 10 yard split which yep. is just the initial 10 yards absolutely of the dash. Yep. shows that initial explosion but tom coughlin used to time every right. year and then that was his drill uh or spot it probably returns that maybe this year oh, maybe he, goes back he to might that be now with the jaguars sit, got a jaguar hat just break out right. the old jaguar hat finally i'm yeah. back yeah uh and for me i three cone that, that that's the drill i love but you know i think you know especially for pass rushers you want to see that flexibility Bend. It, right, exactly. And that's something in the uh, three cone, the L cone, uh, or the L drill. Right. You're, you're showing Ricardo. that bend. Yeah. So can you do that, you know, get around that corner? And then finish that, it. Right, exactly. Yeah. I think the vertical matters, you know, just that lower body explosion, the broad jump, uh, you know, and that's those drills, the higher the number doesn't tell me that you're better. It's just a threshold drill. So right. And the vertical and the broad jump. Explosion. Yeah, I want to see it at least a certain number for, uh, you know, each position. So I think for pass rusher, 10-yard split, three cone, those are the two big ones for me. Yeah, I totally agree with Dane. I mean, that 10-yard, if you see a guy come flying out of there low, you know he's got some bend. Right. He goes low, and then he can plant that foot and turn, mm-hmm. you know, in, in a small spot right there. So I totally agree with him about the three cone. Because the way the three cone is run, you have to – you go – up and then you turn and then you circle back right. which again shows you the ability for the bend and the balance right is another thing and then it has you finish it off coming around the corner you see guys if they get really wide around the and they're mm, off yeah. they're off balance right you're like whoa whoa and then you, but you see guys that come around the corner and they're real tight to that cone and then they turn then you can kind of get something out of that I w- and we always like we always joke about the underwear olympics and it's not football and stuff yeah. but it's kind of it's almost startling how, like, if a guy doesn't look good doing – it's just – it jumps off the screen. Right. And it's, if a guy is really stiff. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I mean, like if he you just, see a guy that's really stiff and, – and watch some of these drills tomorrow with the offensive linemen. And when they start kick sliding right. and they and they and it looks like they're getting drugged back the other way. Yeah, they labor. They labor. It's a and, struggle. They can't get away from – that's the whole thing with offensive linemen, Dave. Get away from the line quickly. Mm-hmm. Kick and get depth and go. And I would I would never dare suggest obviously I would never dare suggest that this is more important than tape, but it's almost like, like some of this stuff can get hidden on tape because you like sure. you got people slamming into you, you got everything's happening. There's yeah. 90 guys all over the place, and then you get out here and it's just like you and a coach. And if you don't look good, it shows. Certain, like it really yeah, shows. Certain schemes in college can help mask some of those yeah. issues, and the. I know there are several teams that believe this, but the number one trait you look for, no matter the position, is how a player holds up in space. I know I've yeah, said that before. No doubt, absolutely. How does a player? It doesn't space matter. Space is important. Linebacker, running back, it doesn't matter. How right. a player holds up in space is huge, and so this is why the combine exists. Right. Uh, you know, aside from the medicals and the interviews and all that, the on field. That's why they don't do these. You know, they they have these drills for a reason. It all matters. And it helps it helps separate you know the athletes from the non athletes and the guys that you know, might be a little stiff in the ankles and guys that have that ankle flexion that you want. So it, it really is beneficial. I, like you said, you know it gets tabbed the underwear Olympics and there's a negative stigma. You know, forty yard dash and that's all people care about. But there's a place for each one of these drills and each one of these times they really matter. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And I. And it's always been impressive to me if you have tall guys and their ability to bend. Mm-hmm. You know, if, they, if a tall guy can really get low to the ground. Yep. I, I remember guys like Derek Thomas uh, way back in the day, Kansas City. He was a blur at Alabama. I just remember how low he used to get to the ground. And those offensive tackles had such a problem getting their hands. No hitting space. No hitting surface. Tall guy, and he's dipping and running 
at the same time. You get the guy that can dip and run. That's what I liked about Noah Spence. Yeah. yeah when you watch Noah Spence. You always find a way to bring your pet cats back. No, but I'm just saying, though, if you, when you watch <laughs> guys work drills, give me the guy that can bend and can get his shoulder down past the tackle and get to the point of the quarterback. Yeah, that's what makes Miles Garrett. You know, kind of the favorite yeah. to be the number one overall pick because that he's Demarcus Ware to me. You know, that, that's that's the player I see that caliber of player, six four, two hundred fifty five pounds around there. The length, the athleticism, the body control, the balance, it's all there uh, to be a productive pass rusher. So, right. yeah, I think going back to the original point about what we look for in defensive linemen, uh, you know, it really comes down to you know these explosion drills and the change of direction. You got time for one more? Or yeah, we... sure. How about one more? All right, and I'm going to totally put y'all on the spot, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, That's okay. Paul, Paul wants to know if you could see a scenario that involves a trade up in the first round. Which mm-hmm. fans mm-hmm. Are, love that, like scenario, like they love to talk about the trade up. Which yeah. I'm and Dave, are we going to do it without a player? Or we have on, to use picks. Well, it, in this scenario, I'm, you're talking about a guy that you didn't think would be in your range. Who, and, yeah, I mean, you're, you're giving up picks, I guess. I mean, I'm thinking, like, right out, I mean, the Demarcus Lawrence scenario. I mean, that was a trade-up in the second, but he was the last end that they liked, and they made a move and got him. Yeah. Morris, Morris Claiborne situation yeah. where, I mean, that's you a, know, yeah, even yeah. Better. a guy that's high on their board, but all of a sudden, oh, I didn't, we didn't think he'd be available here. Let's go get him. Absolutely. I, I think you have to keep that option open. You know, you don't go into the draft thinking, no way we trade up. You have to keep your an open mind to, okay, and go over these scenarios ahead of time. If player X is, you know, gets to a certain point, that's when we start making some calls and figure out, okay, what's it going to take? Uh, and I think for me, pass rusher is what we're looking at. I, yeah, it, almost, it, a, like, certainly, I would say. Right. Barnett. I, Barnett, I think even Harris, you know, if one of these pass, because these pass rushers aren't going to last very long. You know, they're going to fly off the board. And you need one. Can you really wait back and just get your guy? Or do you need to maybe move up a little bit uh, to go get him? I think that very well could be the case this year. And if a Barnett, a Harris, if they fall into the 20s, the early 20s, maybe you package that third rounder to go up and get him. Uh, you, have, you have no five. Yeah. Which makes this tough. It sets you back. It, it does. It does. But it's, you go get your player. If you, you know, if you think he's a guy that can. Fortune favors the bold. Contribute from day one and help you right away. Uh, you go do it. You know, and you know what's fun? And I notoriously hate doing that. I like picks, but I feel so much better about getting rid of ninety-two to go get a guy that I think can help me than I would have getting rid of sixty-seven. Right. I mean, sixty-seven got you Malik Collins, who was number two on the team at sacks. Right. I so it's a way more tenable idea when you're talking about picking at the back of the round, in my opinion. If Davis from Western Michigan, the receiver, would slide, hmm. would you go up for him? Uh, slide where? He slides to 20, Denver. And all it takes is my third rounder? you gotta go, You got to go three to go get there. Come on, Denver. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, I probably would. See, uh, but I don't see any way that he's going to fall that far. Well, maybe, well with nobody, the medi- maybe with the medical information. Nobody, ever, like see, nobody ever sees it, Dane. Laramie well, Tunsil went nine last well, year. Well, that was a little 14, different. 14, I believe. Yeah, yeah well, even further than that. Uh, yeah, I mean, if he falls because of injury, then it's a little a different discussion, you know, because you're trading up for an injured guy. Yeah. You know, he was a really good receiver, and teams were passing on him, uh, you know, for a reason. So that would be a little difficult. But I think uh, – go. I don't want to cut you off. No, I, I think, yeah, I mean, Corey Davis is one of those guys where he's, he's really good, and I, if I have a chance to go get him and all I have to give up is a three, yeah, I'm going to go do it. Yeah. I See, think- this is why I always put out there the – the, if you could get Tony Romo to flop the Denver situation, yeah, sure. where if you could get him to reduce his contract, Denver just to flop spots with you, where everything is clean for everybody. They keep their one, you keep your one. That they would get be it. so dope. They it get would be their, amazing. They're, they're essentially, by allowing you to come up to 20, from 28 to 20, they're giving up a third-round pick. But they're really not giving up a third-round pick. Right. They're just giving you the opportunity to select a player at 20, which – I think it's the cleanest way to do this and with the Broncos. How much more exciting does the draft become for us if they're picking at 20? And now yeah. we're talking about a whole new oh, pool we have of some, players. We'll be ready. We'll be ready. Oh, and of course we will. We'll be ready. I can't. I don't, I don't think I could convince myself to do that deal unless it was for a pass rusher. Like receiver, I can let receiver come to me. I, and I know I'm not saying Corey Davis isn't a good player, but I feel much better letting that come to me. But if you're going to tell me, Charles Harris is the last guy that fits the scheme that Marinelli's really on board with, and that's that's the guy. 
which is kind of ironic. See, boy, I have Charles Harris just outside no, that oh, first round. I'm using that as an No, example. no, I know you are. I know you are. I know Whoever you are. it is. Yeah. I feel if, if that's the guy that you got to go get, go get him, which yeah. it's ironic because that's what they did with Lawrence and it hasn't really panned out, yeah. but whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks, everybody, for Twitter on the 20. We appreciate all the questions. Uh, we'll do this again tomorrow night. So make sure you are following at the draft show. Like I say, that's the best way uh, to get your questions in. So hopefully Dave will select them and get them answered. So coming back uh, here on the draft show from the Indianapolis uh, Combine, I want to get into what if a player doesn't like football? We'll talk about that next. To work this big land, you need equipment with values rooted as deep in Texas soil as you are. Like John Deere compact tractors with a six-year powertrain warranty and big features that help you work less so you have more time to do what you love. John Deere was first in the Texas fields, and we're proud to be on the field as the official ag and turf equipment of the Dallas Cowboys. Find Texas-sized deals at myjohndeerdealer.com slash football. Terms, conditions, exclusions, and warranty limitations apply. See below for details. With unlimited data from AT&T, you can stream your favorite DirecTV content almost anywhere. Side effects may include sports-induced public celebration, yes! increased desire to share spoilers, and repeated late-night use of the phrase. Just one more episode. The unlimited effect. Get unlimited data when you switch to AT&T Wireless and have DirecTV. After 22 gigabytes of data usage, AT&T may slow speeds. Must have eligible TV service. If you're not eligible, AT&T will move you to a new plan and overage charges may apply. Plan will include stream saver. Other restrictions apply. See store for plan details. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with sideline access and photo ops with current players, Cowboy legends, cheerleaders, and me, Brian Broadus. Want to stay at the team hotel? With Star Sports Tours, you can. And our outstanding ticket selection is unmatched. You can trust the official travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And with us, you'll travel like a pro. Visit StarSportsTours.com to book your travel packages today. When an injury keeps you from being active, you want one place that has the expertise to care for all your orthopedic needs. As the largest not-for-profit health care system in Texas, Baylor Scott & White Health is ready to care for you as a whole person. From athletic injuries to arthritis, you'll get personalized care from orthopedic specialists. So no matter where life finds you, today or in years to come, trust that we'll be there to care for you. To find a physician, visit BaylorScottAndWhite.com. This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. The Dallas Cowboys select... Ezekiel Elliott. And now, your hosts, Dane Brugler, David Hellman, and Brian Broaddus. And also include Kent Garrison in that, the executive producer of the Draft Show, as always. We thank you guys for joining us here. we got about uh, about 15 more minutes left in the uh, in the program. We're just going to remind you, too, that uh, we want to thank uh, Caliber Collusion and uh, Tommy John for uh, bringing us out here. Uh, to Indianapolis and letting us participate in this. Dave, you put up a poll. Yes. Uh, draft uh, At the draft show poll uh, asking would. It's, it's been up. Yeah. It, 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 if Christian McCaffrey was the Cowboys pick there you go. at 28, my choices were you would flip out in a good way or flip out in a bad way. Right. Uh, there's been 500 votes in the 20 minutes it's Thank been up. Thank you very much for doing that. 71% of people said bad way and said no. Get that guy off my team. I don't want that. Surprised by that, there, Dane Brugler. No, that's I mean that's what I thought. And that's that, not that's. <laughs> no, I mean, did you vote on this? Uh, yeah, seventy <laughs> times. Uh, no, <laughs> no I mean, offense to Mr. McCaffrey. But right, Cowboys fans are smart. I mean, I so look, there you go. I love McCaffrey. I do. I I think he's an outstanding player. I'd love to have him on my team. But for this team, this situation. Uh, you know, give me a guy that is going to see more snaps. He's going to impact my team more than I think McCaffrey would. Yeah, I. So, I, 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 it's predictable. Yeah, but yeah, that, I, I think it's a. Uh, I think it's a good idea. I think you're right about the not Cowboys. to mention. Just get Joe Mixon three three rounds later. Oh, that's yeah. another poll question. Yeah, Joe Mixon. That's uh, that would be. It, Cowboys fans like let's. They're like, would you draft Joe Mixon in the fourth round? It would be like ninety two to eight, probably. You know the the guy that was the most adamant about. Joe Mixon not being here, and he went on record and said it, it was John Dorsey. Actually, too, the general manager from the Lions was yeah. that. Yeah, he said he was. Yeah, he was adamant about. I'm, I'm sorry, man. Who is the general manager from the Lions? Bob Quinn. Bob Quinn. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I usually know all these guys. I don't know Bob very well. It's funny. Dorsey during his presser today kind of retracted that a little oh, bit. Oh, did he? Did went he step a, little, a little more, walked soft, the line, and he's yeah. soft. Yeah, but but I tell you what though, a lot of guys. It, it's like I say, it's a it's a subject for another thing. March eighth, 
will be his pro day. But uh, we thank everybody for voting for that uh, thing. Okay, I want to get into this for the last 10 minutes or so and just take your opinion here of mm -hmm. as we get to visit, and maybe not so much us, but you, you get an idea about these kids. You get a little bit of a, you know, they're in a setting, they're thrown out there, they're asked, they're asked questions, they do their best to, to answer the questions. But what if you get a kid, and this came up with Leonard Fournette today. Yeah. Leonard Fournette's interview, if you go back and watch it, he really talked about, you know, not really being a, a football fan. Yeah. You know. And so I, I want to know, because I've, I've had experience, I want to get your guys' takes on what if you get a player that comes off as he's, that, he, that football is not important to him. You know, and especially a guy that's a very high pick. And, I, and I'm not picking on Leonard Fournette. I'm just saying, what if, a, what if a player came up as part of the interview process and you found out he really doesn't love football, but when you watch the tape, he's one of your 20 best players on your board. We have to... <laughs> It's a difficult discussion because how do you know he doesn't like football? I think that's if you if, if in your interview process, right? But you I'm get like, the feeling that he's not totally buying it. You know, he goes, oh, "I play football. I've got a lot of other interests." Uh, Martellus Bennett, I, I'll just use him. Yeah. Very talented football player. Helped right. the Patriots second, win yeah, Super Bowl. Second round player from Texas A and M. If you interviewed Martellus Bennett, you would see that there's a lot more to life than football for him. And, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, you. Christian McCaffrey, uh, you know, he can play the piano. He can do all these things. Sure. You know, I mean. So guy, did Joey Harrington and see what he got me. Gosh. You uh, love bringing that up. I, I know. I, to me, I don't know. I, I struggle with this because it's tough to really, and I think all teams struggle with this. It's right. tough to get in their head. I, you know, I want to talk to the coaches. They're high school coaches. You know, I want to find out how important football was to them. I don't need to have a guy who loved the NFL growing up and watched every game and that's you know How about just football in general? What well, I need a guy the game. I need guys going to work hard, okay? If a guy Bingo. And that, that to me that's a big thing. If if a guy treats this as a job, I'm okay with that. You know, I, there are players on the Cowboys right now who might not love football right. but treat it as a job, collect a paycheck more than fans would probably guess. Exactly. And, and I think every team does that, not just the Cowboys. All 32 teams have players who might not love football, but they like it, and they realize the, the doors that it opens. And that's what I heard from Fournette today. Yeah. I'm not sure I heard a guy that just head over heels loves football, but he understands the doors that he it opens. He said he works hard at yeah. it. Yeah. He does. He said he never, he never thought that football would give him these opportunities. Sure. And so I think he understands that you know, these are doors that are open to him because of what he can do on the field. And so I'm not worried about Fournette squandering that away. And so I think that's where you have to kind of walk that fine line. It's okay not to love football, but you have to like it enough to the point where you're going to work your butt off and you're going to put in everything you can because you know it equals the paycheck. I w and I would even go as you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to love football. You have to be you have to be driven by something. Yeah. And whether right. it's whether it's feeding your kids or changing your family's you know, social status or right. being the best player ever and getting to the Hall of Fame. There's plenty of guys that care about stuff like that. And, like, you know, Dak Prescott cares about where he is in the pantheon of the game. I did not get the sense that Leonard Fournette cares about that, but I agree. I, I get the sense that Leonard Fournette will work his ass off for other reasons to right. be good at football. Um, going back, very brief history lesson. Last year, how much of a joker who did not care about football did Joey Bosa seem like? Yeah. Yeah. Great he got, example. No, he got that's, up fair. There. that's fair. He looks that's fair. That's very ridiculous. He's like that's cracking true. jokes at the media. He's just kind of like he's like too cool. He's got bad posture. Defensive rookie of the year. Double digit sacks, even though he sat out some games. That's very fair. You can you can be driven by plenty of stuff other than and honestly. I don't care if you don't want to win a Super Bowl as long as you're willing to work your ass off to help the team win a Super Bowl. You know right. what I mean? Like, does that make sense? Did you get the impression, though, the Cowboys weren't interested in Joey Bosa because they thought he was a clown? I I mean, no. I never really got that sense. Would you think that? He was on their board uh, really high, top yeah. five, right? right you, know, Zeke, you, know, right? you know who's playing running back for them right now, right? Who, for the Cowboys? Ezekiel Elliott. Sure. Is he not a bit of a clown? No, he loves football. He loves football to his core, but is he yeah. is a class clown. He no, is yeah. a jokester. I just got the impression that he is that, a big kid. I got the impression that there were some people that did, weren't in love with Joey Bosa because, because of because, on field or off because field? of his demeanor. Because of his demeanor. 
Yeah, I mean, see, and that's I mean, and that's the fine line we're talking about. That goes back to the right kind of guy. And whether that's right, I mean, right. that. But you're trying to evaluate these players. But it, I'm, I want glass eaters. But those people would be wrong because look at Bosa now. If they didn't, yeah. you know, they didn't like his demeanor. Okay, you know, and that's not all. Everyone on the roster is going to be that way. They're not all always going to be wired exactly how you want. Ideally, sure. You, you know, you've got choir boys. You've got guys that are wired to play football at a high level. And you know every single starter, every single first round pick, it's just not the case. You know, it's just not that's not how it works. It's not how people work. Yeah. Right. So it's a fine line you have to walk. And in Bosa, I think, is a great example because you know he doesn't come off like that. Uh, you know, student of the game yeah. who you know Can't really cares right. important. Right. But I mean, you talk to his coaches and they said he didn't miss a practice. I mean, he sure. he gave full effort. You mm-hmm. know, week in and, week out. Oh, I was wrong about hey, him. Yeah. However, and however he might feel about football. Speaking, as, I'm very c- close to the LSU program. Leonard Fournette is was the heartbeat of that roster. I mean, he was the guy. He paced their practices. He demanded excellence. All the type of stuff you want to hear about those type of no, things. No, okay, Christian McCaffrey skipped his bowl game. Which well, See, Leonard but did so did too. Fournette. Well, that was he was he wasn't fully healthy. Yes, uh, Fournette gets a little bit of a pass there, but McCaffrey was healthy and he decided sure. not to play. Now, you blame him. It's a business decision, you know. He, no, he's not getting paid for that. Uh, he's not getting paid to play in the Sun Bowl, you know. Right. So I understand. I don't fault him, but for you, if you're in that war room, is that an indication that he maybe he doesn't love football as much as you want him to? I think that to me, and this is now you talk about you have your issues. This is where I have mine. I don't blame the player for after what I saw happen to Jalen Smith, mm-hmm. and I thought Jalen Smith wasn't going to get drafted. Yeah, I thought Jalen Smith wasn't going to ever play again. <laughs> he went in the second round. And he went in the second round. Top 40 as much. And, and he might not have gone to the Cowboys if two picks ahead of them had not gone off the board. Ogba? Yeah. God? Yeah. 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 Ogba and, and, and the two defensive ends went off the board. And now, that, now you could see Stephen Jones and them scramble a little bit trying to get on the phones to get rid of that pick. Mm-hmm. But they take you know, and who was who was way up there on their board. He was he was a, a top five player for them. But I'm just saying though, to me, I it it doesn't bother me about the guy skipping because I don't fault Leonard Fournette. Uh, Fournette, I don't fault him after what I saw with Jalen Smith. Yeah. If we're playing for a national championship or in this sure. playoff system, sure. and they and they decide that they don't want to do that. Now I have a little bit of a little bit of pause there. Yeah. I, I, I'm like, and, okay, why are you not? That, if, if, you're letting yeah. every, you're letting all these other you're letting the Brian Broadduses of the world down. Who's who's not a superstar? Yeah, but but has a chance at a national championship ring. And I, I, I would venture a guess you will never see like a quality football player ever do that. Like sit out of a game that truly and really matters. Right. Because oh, I agree. of that, it but, just bothers me. I, I would I would be I would be very concerned about a player that just didn't love football. And I totally respect what you're saying. And maybe it's the old school part of Wait, me, to me it's the, the, the Jason Witts right. of the world. Sure. I, I, that I, for I 14 it. years, yeah, but hey, he's done nothing but love football. Who does Jason Witten sit next to in the Cowboys locker room and they're like thick as thieves? Cole Beasley, yeah. who left training camp. And came back. He he actually. Well, Jason an NFL Witten, roster. Jason, if you remember, Jason Witten wasn't too happy with Cole he Beasley. He was pissed. He was pissed that Cole Beasley but quit. Cole Beasley. I mean, he came back. He he obviously did what he needed to do. He took it on, and and you know they're brothers just like everybody else. Me, it takes all different sorts. It could be just as you know a guy with some character issues. You know, it's a red flag. It's something that requires further investigation. And then when you draft him, it's a little bit of a risk. But plenty of character guys work out. You yeah. know, for the better. Yeah. I want to say this real quick, too. And Fournette's interview was not inspiring. I'm not trying to give him a pass. But people were who do you compare yourself to? Who do you model your game after? With the way these guys are coached, it's very possible he just didn't want to say any names and wind up in a headline. I'll be honest. Zeke's interview last year, oh. not, I ain't got nothing out of it. Remember, and this is going way back, DeMarco Murray never – he didn't want to say Emmett Smith's name. Like, right. he would, did not want to talk about Emmett Smith. He didn't want to be compared to him. He didn't want to – again, you know, Leonard Fournette could be sitting up there thinking, like, the last thing I need is for pro football talk to write, Fournette, I see myself as Adrian Peterson. You right. Know? And so that could just be self-preservation. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, we sit here and we're thinking, this guy doesn't watch football. He well, doesn't but, care about football. But, Maybe but, he's just being smart. Okay, I, I, I take the media side out of it, though. But if he – okay, what if he did carry what we saw over there into those rooms? 
and you kind of got the vibe, and, and you're not really sure how to read him. I think and you're seeing, like, does he, does he really care about – I mean, you watch the tough. tape. You can see he cares about football because he runs over people. But is it, is it really his long-term it, – is it his long yeah. – you know, when you're investing in a guy, he you know, is, like Jason Witten, you invested for 14 years, and that's what you got. He has driven enough – he has been a hyped prospect since he was 12 years old, and he has driven enough to – didn't deliver on the team aspect of it. Obviously, LSU didn't accomplish a lot while he Shaquille was there. Shaquille O'Neal, same way. But he has delivered on every bit of the promise of what he could be in terms of his talent. And he's here now, so you know he's driven, and he's a freakish athlete. I, I, I would not let any of those types of concerns dissuade me from drafting him I, and, and I don't think you're wrong. I remember a couple of years ago, Dominic Easley, it, talking to him, sure. him telling me that he, uh, he didn't watch football growing up or even now. like He preferred to watch cartoons. Yeah, and I wasn't sure how to take that, you right? Because it, it, it's one thing growing up; it's another thing right now. You don't have, again. You don't have to love football. You don't have to love the NFL and watch it day in, day out. You need a release, and I understand that. But just the way he came off, it was very concerning. And, and Fournette, and he, and he had another bad quote today, where you know he said, "Yeah, me and Dalvin Cook are friends." Like, well, you talk. What do you talk about? You talk about the game, and he's like, "No, man, we just talk about life." Like, football players don't want to talk about football all the time, and. And he's got a child, too, so football is... And that is a totally understandable sentiment, but when you hear a guy say it, you're just kind of like, why not? Why don't you want to talk about football all the time? No, I just was... My concern is if you go in these meetings or these rooms and you're trying to separate these players, if they're so, you know, does this guy really love football? Is he passionate about the game? Does he, is he that, you know, that might be the thing. That might be the stack yeah. that puts one guy on top of that. You're it's just wrong. something when you're building the board yeah. that and a lot of these guys go through. And, I mean, Dalvin Cook's answers in that regard were way better. So if you think yeah. they're close, right? yeah, yeah. you can slide The Dalvin tape Cook is on great top. on both of them, yeah. but, what you know, what yeah. you would do. So anyway. Fair. All right, well, hey, that's all the time we have for the draft show today. Good, good what discussion a, there. Yeah, thank you, go. guys. I want to thank Dane Brugler. He's done a great job here. I mean, he's got a couple more days of – of working with us. He's done a lot of interviews around a very popular guy here at the Radio Row. A lot of knowledge there, so we're very fortunate to have him. David Hillman, thank you again, too, for everything you've done. Kent Garrison for keeping us on the air. We appreciate that. I want to thank also uh, Derek Eagleton back home and uh, Taylor Stern for always their help and pushing all this out. We'll be back with you guys tomorrow at uh, 5 p.m. Central for another edition of the Draft Show. Be able to talk about some workouts. We've got the O-line And then the running backs going off tomorrow, and we'll have some more interviews and thoughts for that as well. Uh, So stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.